One former Denver Broncos great has announced his retirement. The Broncos trial with two of Pat Bullen's sisters against the trust has been vacated. What does that mean for the organization? We break it down all on today's Broncos Weekly. You are locked on Broncos, your daily Denver Broncos podcast. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. So great to be back with all of you here today, back from vacation a little bit earlier than expected, but Broncos news continues to roll out this week in our Broncos Week in Review. A couple of the big topics, Demarius Thomas announcing his retirement from the National Football League, signing a one-day contract with the Broncos to retire as a Bronco. I think it was no surprise to anybody that saw the amount of reaction and outpour from some of Demarius Thomas's former teammates like Peyton Manning, anybody that had the opportunity to play with DT understood how valuable he was, not just to the organization, but also inside that locker room. He was a leader, and not to mention his impact on the field for the Broncos during his time was very special. One could even argue it was probably the greatest draft pick selection or the greatest thing that Josh McDaniels ever did for the Denver Broncos. So to recap, DT hanging it up. We're going to give our perspective here on today's Broncos Weekly here on the YouTube channel, Lockdown Broncos. Make sure you hit that subscribe button. But with DT announcing his retirement, I wanted to go through and go to where he ranks in Broncos history. Now, he ranks second overall in team history in some very major statistical categories, third in the other. So first off, second in franchise history with receiving yards. He had 9,814 receiving yards in his time with Denver. He had 66 total touchdowns as a Bronco. 36 of those came from Peyton Manning, and he was third overall in terms of receptions with 718 team receptions. We all know Rod Smith is the record holder in all of those major categories for the Broncos, but Rod Smith, even when DT was still as a Denver Bronco, Rod had said himself, He believes that Demarius Thomas is the best wide receiver in Broncos history. There's a real legitimate argument that could be had, I think, amongst fans, amongst anybody. But Rod Smith, obviously, is not going to be impartial himself. He's going to to give that recognition to DT, rightfully so. But Broncos fans, I want to have this discussion with you. Who do you feel like is the best wide receiver in Broncos history? Is it Rod Smith? Is it DT? I say between those two, there's a real legitimate argument. And you can't go wrong with either selection. So in the YouTube comments down below, let me know what your thoughts are as to who you think the best wide receiver is in Broncos team history. Uh, But let's go back to that 2013 season, the Broncos record-setting offense, DT. Going back and watching some of those games, just even seeing some of the highlights of what he was able to do that season when Peyton Manning and the team broke every offensive record from points per game, point totals, yard productivity, It was a special thing to watch. DT, his size, his speed. I mean, I go back to the Arizona Cardinals game where he just got down the left sideline. Nobody could catch him. I mean, he was such a physical receiver. It really stood out on the game tape. He was a hard cover. You really couldn't afford to go one-on-one against him by any means if you're a defensive back. But he had 94 catches. 1,430 yards receiving and 14 touchdowns that year. We know the smokescreen route was very popular. And I think for DT, the one thing that stands out to me about him as a receiver was the curl route, sometimes even hitching up. He just used his body. He used his size to box out smaller defensive backs. And and often at times, a lot of defenses would play the Broncos in that cover two man, cover two shell, where they're going to have a safety help over the top out of a too high look. And the reality was the Broncos had so many different weapons at wide receiver in 2013 team with Wes Welker, Eric Decker, Julius Thomas emerging as a tight end hybrid option for the Broncos, and then Nosha Moreno out of the backfield as a receiver. Denver had all these weapons, so they really couldn't afford to play that type of defense any longer. We saw that adjustment probably about three or four weeks after the season began in 2013, and we saw defenses have to play them more one-on-one because if you're going to cover Demarius Thomas, well, Eric Decker, Wes Welker, they're going to eat. They're going to have success. If you cover the slot and you cover DT, well, you've got no Sean Moreno coming out of the backfield as an option. You've got Julius Thomas, who's just a size mismatch advantage against any defender. He was great in the red zone. Then you had Eric Decker, who was really that possession guy and also a guy that was going to stretch downfield. Wes Welker running those fin routes, the out routes, and, and eventually getting up the seams on a couple of plays. So it was pick your poison. So DT was part of one of the most historic offenses 
in NFL history, often underappreciated, in my opinion, by some Broncos fans, but a great leader. His teammates loved him. The guys in the current wide receiver room for the Broncos right now, Tim Patrick, Cortland Sutton, they have nothing but great things to say because he mentored those guys up and he got them ready. That's why those guys are still prominent parts of what the Broncos want to do offensively here in 2021. Shifting our focus now to the next major talking point of discussion, the ongoing lawsuit that was to be expected to hit the trial to Arapahoe County Court between Beth Bolin Wallace and Amy Bolin Clemmer, two of Pat Bolin's daughters against the trust. This was going to be a trial that was going to determine the trajectory of the ownership of the organization going forward this trial has now been vacated in our nine news reporter mike Cliss touched on that specifically nine news.com be sure to check out the article there but some of the interesting points here about this being vacated it leads to some assumptions what's going on are the broncos up for sale potentially has there been an owner that has been named are the broncos going to name somebody an owner in the near future we don't know this as of yet the broncos have declined comment rightfully so this is an ongoing process that has to play out but it is interesting Interesting to note that Amy Bull and Clemmer had mentioned, and Beth Bull and Wallace, they mentioned a little bit earlier, probably last year, that if in fact the team was put up for sale, they would withdraw from the lawsuit. So far, that is now the case as it has been vacated. We don't know if the Broncos have been put up for sale, though. That's going to be a big question. Now, I want to throw it to fans here. If the Broncos are in fact up for sale, who do you want to come in as an owner? What do you want out of an owner? I think this is a very important question because oftentimes people are talking about Jeff Bezos of Amazon. They want him to own the Broncos because he is cash rich. I don't think that should be the sole reason you want a guy like Bezos to become an owner. I think that the owner for the Denver Broncos, whoever it may be, whether it is Brittany Bolin, whether it is somebody else, they have to have these qualities in mind that they actually care about the team. They're going to be involved in the day-to-day in the facility, away from the facility activities of what entails to be an owner in the National Football League. That's what Pat Bowling was for the Denver Broncos. He was hands-on, boots on the ground every single day while he was the controlling owner of the franchise. And he did so much, not just for the Broncos, but for the National Football League in general. This is something that the next owner has to have an investment in. Some people have mentioned Stan Kroenke. Well, Stan Kroenke, he cannot own two NFL franchises. He would have to sell the LA Rams. But here's where I'm going to throw my caution flag when Kroenke's name is brought up. Any Kroenke for that matter. They don't seem very involved in the franchises that they are a part of. Obviously, we can see that with the Denver Nuggets, not too much involvement in there, or else there would be a little bit more of a push for the Nuggets to get a, a big-time star in NBA free agency. But ultimately, the Broncos need an owner that is just as invested, if not more invested, than Pat Bullen was, which is going to be very hard because Pat was the most invested out of anybody, and he really cared about the Broncos on the field, making sure that they're winning. The sellout streak at Empower Field at Mile High, it speaks volumes to itself even to this day. They have to maintain that as a priority, in my opinion, if they're going to take over as the next controlling owner. Now, ultimately, this doesn't boil down to me making this decision, but I think that fans are so invested with somebody who has really deep pockets that they're going to ignore the fact that, is that person a good leader? Are they fit to own an NFL team? How are they going to approach the community-based stuff that the Broncos already do? Do they carry out the vision that Pat Bullen originally had for the Broncos? They have to do those things that Pat did. And if they don't, in my opinion, non-negotiable, they cannot own the Denver Broncos. But that is just my opinion, Broncos country. And now I want to hear from you. Let me know in the comment section down below what your thoughts are on Demarius Thomas retiring as a Denver Bronco. Who's the greatest wide receiver in Broncos team history between DT, Rod Smith, let us know, let's debate, let's discuss. And also let me know what your thoughts are on the vacated trial that was going to determine the path of the Broncos ownership in the future. How do you want it to play out? Let us know in the comments below. Make sure you hit that subscribe button, hit the thumbs up button as well, and turn on notifications to get every single video that we do here every single day on the Lockdown Broncos YouTube channel. I'm Cody Work. We'll see you next time.